Just remember, I never claim to be the end all, know all, everything projectors, but I hope this is helpful. Guys, what's up? It's Matt with 86 Gaming. I'm actually really excited about this one. This is the Brookstone Big Shots, an ultra short throw projector that appears to stay around that price of $300. Now, if you're a first time purchaser of Brookstone like we were, take that extra 15% off, $280. Uh, we're looking at something that's 720p native upscalable to 1080p, not 4K or anything super fancy like that. And on really close inspection, when you get really close to the wall, not as bad as most, but still present, you can see pixelation projected onto the wall itself. So there is that. Now it is capable of projecting much larger than it says like most ultra short throws are. I have it about 32 inches out from the wall projecting about 120 inch screen on the wall right now. So and that's a handsome guy in the background there. What do you know? It is a DLP projector which is digital light processing projector. It does have a much better than I thought capability to to project these images like you know I didn't, I didn't expect much. And we already think that if you're going to be as low as you want to be for something that's ultra short throw, it's the PH450U, something along those lines. And that's about $500 to $600. This was about $280 by the end of the purchase. And super freaking awesome. I, I plugged it in, I started it up, and I was super impressed. It does have Android 4.4 baked into it, abilities to connect to Wi-Fi, and it has a really cool feature because there's no adjustable feet, there's no keystone, there's no uh, focus wheel, there's none of that. But there is a little laser-guided side eye on it that's right next to the lens that you can press for the autofocus. And when you autofocus, it throws the grid up and it focuses everything perfectly, flawless every time you do have the ability to do keystone adjustments within a small window of about 10 degrees as far as how much you want to be able to change your keystone you're sort of limited there some of the other features about it that really this is this is the selling feature for me 100% guys two 8 watt JBL speakers inside with a bass boost sub on it and it is phenomenal I think for $280 alone purchasing it to be a Bluetooth speaker which you can do by the way is pretty outrageously amazing and I'm super super excited about that as soon as i started listening to it coming from the speakers i was like why has nobody else done this it sounds incredible for a 280 dollar projector now if you think you're buying something like a, a sono speaker or a bose speaker it doesn't really compare but it's good and it's far better and far beyond any any built-in speakers i've ever used on any projector this size especially now let's go over a couple things real quick before we keep moving in too deep into all these specifications everything i'm saying i'll check make sure i didn't miss anything it does recommend the max distance from the wall be 27 inches like i told you we got it at about 32 right here which is kind of big some people don't have the ability to put an ultra short throw 32 out from the wall but some of you that have fancy studio theater rooms maybe it does recommend that the minimum distance also be 11 inches from the wall. You get too close, you can't really focus it very well, and you sort of lose some of that picture. It's got a throw ratio of 0.33, a contrast ratio of 400 to 1. And contrast ratios among all display devices never really tell me anything. It's usually you got to look at it and you got to do a black crush test or something on it, which I can attempt to do on this, but with a projector, it really just depends on light in the room. So it could be difficult. Now I can tell you from looking at it, the blacks are very black. While they might not be the blackest of blacks I've ever seen, there is good depth and detail in the entirety of everything that I've watched and I've really, really liked that. Our aspect ratio is 16 by nine and that seems to be a set 16 by nine, no four three option. And of course I covered the two eight one JBL speakers, which just completely impressed me and blew me away. It's awesome sounding for the price as a speaker, a Bluetooth speaker alone worth it. it does have five gigabytes of internal storage which is for your app downloads from the android store now the android experience is pretty interesting and pretty cool and we'll cover something about that using the remote here in just a minute i like it a lot i think it's awesome i wish there was more features like this in other projectors now let's go over inputs real quick this is kind of where it, it takes off and flies and at the same time it kind of like comes crashing down like it took off and flew and it's flying well but it's got rocks tied to it so it's going to crash so it's having a hard time flying but we have three hdmi inputs which is awesome that's great because even on my PF1000, you've only got two. On the PH450, you've only got one. I got to get a splitter so that I can have other things plugged into it. No VGA, nothing like that is wasted on it. There is no optical out, which was kind of a bummer, but not for the price. No optical. USB plug-in, both USB to check data on the USB device via the projector itself. How are things like Roku sticks or Roku box or Amazon Fire, whatever you're going to watch on. Three HDMIs, one USB in the back. That's just awesome. It just is. It's Bluetooth capable. I haven't said a hundred times in this video already. 
super impressed with those abilities. A quick note too is that it's a 200 lumen projector. But if we're being honest about lumens, a lot of what I've learned looking at projectors over time, it's kind of a gimmicky way of measurement. What I mean by that is my PF1000U is 1000 lumens, the PH450U is 450 lumens, yet this 200 lumen one seems brighter. Does that tell you anything? I hope so. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're a new buyer to projectors, somebody that's just looking at them, try to take lumens with a grain of salt. So you may be wondering how it sounds as far as when it cools itself while it's going. This was a little bit of an afterthought. Feel free to skip this if you don't care. But it's one little tiny, probably 90 millimeter fan. I don't know, I didn't measure it. It's a small fan in there that keeps it cool and it has this kind of sound. Let's listen. Before we get started, this is just for reference for you. I'm up here by the screen now. You can see the size of the screen on the wall. This is just for reference, but we're about to get started taking a look at the menu. Before we go too far into some of this, if you hit your little input button over there, you've got HDMI 1, 2, and 3 to swap between HDMI's D, L, and A, and you've got screen mirroring. Pretty cool. Now, if you want to do more with this projector, you're going to need the Brookstone app. You can download it from the App Store, whether it's iOS or Android and you can utilize it in different ways there as well to give you a little bit more smart functionality and control over the device itself. All right, so here we are on the menu on first boot up. This is essentially what you see is the top five icons. You got the app center, the file browser, the movie player, your settings, and your system update. One note to make about the system update is I've been having issues getting it to download. It stops at about 30%, somewhere in that range, and refuses to download the update. Hopefully they come out with an update to fix the update problem later. I did add YouTube just for SNG because I wanted to test the app download, and we'll kind of go over that real quick first. We'll start with the App Center, and as you click the App Center, you open up an Android App Store essentially, and you've got Top Choices, Other, Your Apps, apps that you have installed, and Settings. Now remember we have 5 gigabytes of internal storage, which is more than enough for pretty much all the apps you might want to put on here. You want to look for something like streaming, that's cool, we'll see what they have to offer right out of the box. We've got Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, something called Slacker Radio. I've never listened to that myself. HBO Go, Amazon Instant Video, Sling, Twitch, and I'm sure we could find some other stuff as well looking deep enough into the App Store itself. If we use the search features, things like that. Let's uh, go ahead and download this. And I want to do this one on purpose because I'm going to show you why. So as we might see, uh, I just want to make a quick note too. You'll see these color scan lines kind of going on throughout this video. Uh, ignore those. You don't see those in person and if it's just kind of difficult to articulate what you're going to actually see when you're looking at a projector. Those I, I don't see at all. When I look back on the monitor for the recording, I see that happening, but that's not really there. I mean, well, I mean, it's there, but you don't see it with a human eye. We've gone to the HBO Go app. We want to be able to use this. Let's well, say you need a mouse. Well, this is where Brookstone was smart. On this remote, they have a button right here to turn it into a fly mouse. And when you turn it into a fly mouse, you, mean, you get the idea. It's a fly mouse. You can use it like a mouse. To also have your remote be able to turn into a fly mouse, that way you can use it as a mouse pointer on the screen itself. Just turn it off when you're done, and you're back on remote mode. File browser, there's not much to cover because I don't have anything on this. Movie player is pretty simple. If you do have things that's stored on the device, then you can do that, or a USB drive. One downside to this projector is there's no micro SD or SD card input. Settings, this is where some of the stuff gets really cool. Now, we can try to mess with this thing real quick, and I'll show you something really easily. You can go through your Wi-Fi setup, Bluetooth, you can enable the Brookstone Big Shot's Bluetooth capabilities in order for you to use it like a JBL Bluetooth speaker around the house if you weren't interested in watching anything but you wanted to listen to something. Audio out devices if you wanted to plug in external speakers or an external subwoofer. The autofocus. Now this is where I was like, let's see how good this is because, you know, I pull it out of the box and there's no focus wheel, something that I'm very used to seeing, no keystone wheel, something that you may or may not see nowadays in most of the modern projectors, but it has the autofocus. Well, we wanted to find out how good it was, right? Let's try something real quick and let's see what we can do with autofocus. It's found all the blurs and despite the fact that it's still skewed, it has refocused everything based off of the skew that I did to it. Let's put it back. Okay, so I put the image back to kind of where it belongs, and we're going to keep looking at a few things over here. The focus, which was really cool, right? We were talking about autofocus, but you can also do manual focus. You can focus the DLP manually is essentially what it says, or you can focus it automatically. Pretty straightforward. I've got it in vivid mode right now, but you don't need it in vivid mode in order for it to be super awesome. I mean, there's, there's, there's very minimal difference. You don't have a lot of control over the different things you can do. No sports mode, nothing super fancy like that. And you can do keystone correction. Now, when you do the autofocus, it'll automatically do keystone correction. It's got a current value of two on the keystone correction, but you can go in there and change that as well. You can, of course, set your date and time. And you can learn a little bit about the projector, including what the update is on right now. It should be 1.1.8, I believe, but again, I can't download it, so it's stuck at 1.1.2. 
If you ever feel like you've done too much to the projector and you need to get back to doing something, you can do a factory reset on it. That's pretty much that. We can attempt the system update again and we can see what happens. Apparently nothing. So again, as you download apps, they're gonna put on here just like YouTube did. You'll download things like HBO Go, or your Amazon Prime, things like that. You'll be able to download them and have them all right here and you'll be able to use your controller as both a mouse and a controller itself. So guys, one thing that's really hard to do is articulate how good something sounds over a recording, but we can attempt to do that here and that's what I'm gonna try to do. It's really gonna be dependent on what you're listening through and the fact that it's been through sound rendering and cleanup and all that stuff. So you're not gonna be able to hear it exactly as you probably wanna hear it, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn something on and we're gonna listen to the speakers of this thing as it fills up the room, as well as watch some sample footage of an actual movie or videos or whatever we play. It's always been real. So yeah, I don't know if that helps you, but pretty incredible sound. We'll check out a couple just random clips of me uh, trying to record something. And guys, remember, there is not really a camera out there that's going to do a lot of justice for what an actual projector is going to look like in person. So take a little bit of this with that grain of salt, because I want you to know that you don't see scan lines, you get better color accuracy, all of that stuff when you're actually looking at it. Trying to record an image that's being recorded, it's kind of like watching a bootleg movie or something. Anyways, I hope people found this helpful. I hope it was somewhat informative if you've been looking at this or just noticed this come out. And you guys have a great day, night, whatever it is. I'll see you in the next video I do.